Hi everyone, I'm here with a Bible study. I hope you guys are having a good day. Let's learn this together. Alright, tonight our devotion is by Cassandra Tearsman. And the Bible verse she picked out to go with her devotion tonight is Psalm 138, verse 3, which reads, On the day I called to you, you answered me. You made me strong and brave. That's great. Really great. That's so nice. And now we'll go and read all of Psalm 138. Put that right there. It's not that long at all, but it's little. It is a song of David. I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and will praise your name for your love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted above all things your name and your word. When I called, you answered me. You made me bold and stout-hearted. May all the kings of the earth praise you, O Lord. When they hear the words of your mouth, may they sing of the ways of the Lord. For the glory of the Lord is great. Though the Lord is on high, he looks upon the lowly. But the proud he knows from afar. But the proud he knows from afar. Remember. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the anger of my foes. With your right hand you save me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. Amen. He won't. God won't. He doesn't break a promise. He does not break a promise. Okay, let's get back to Sanders' devotion now. Okay. Cassandra says this tonight. As an amateur green thumb, I'm ready about, I'm oh, sorry, I'm reading about tough plants for tough places. Plants are like people. Some are happier in the warmer climates. Some can go longer than others without a drink of water. Some thrive in sunlight, whereas others sunburn easily, requiring shade and some enjoy a robust four-season climate, gladly withstanding snow and freezing temperatures. Though plants can endure adverse garden conditions, such as drought, shade, heavy clay soil, or dry rocky soil, likewise though, people can endure adversity and hardship, yet preserve and still thrive. Spiritually, I want to be like a tough plant for tough places, able to endure adversity and still bloom and thrive despite tough situations in life. Sorry, my mouth's getting dry. But I'll need help. God, the master gardener, creates both plants and people, giving each unique attributes and characteristics deep-rooted spiritual strength, stability, security, and resilience come from Jesus, from abiding in Him and staying planted in His Word. Psalm 138.3 confirms that Jesus will make me strong and brave if I call out to Him. So rather than wonder if I'm the right type of toughness, I'm asking Jesus to make me spiritually tough so I can survive and thrive despite whatever adverse conditions I may face in the garden of life. 
and then bloom where you are planted. Do your best where God has put you, as he put you there for a reason. Someone very special taught me that, told me that verse. And your homework from Cassandra tonight is this. Spiritually, are you a tender annual party perennial or a tough person for a tough place? As a reminder that it's Jesus who gives strength and courage, visit a local plant nursery to find a tough plant for a tough place. Drought tolerant, not fussy about soil type, for your home or garden. Ask Jesus to make you strong and brave for the tough situations in life. Amen. All right, guys. And that was our devotion for today. And now we're going to go to the animal devotion. So everybody pick your animal. Mushroom's got a pig again. You always pick a pig. Oh, no water in there. Okay. No, it's dry. What was that? What'd you do? It looks like it's pouring the rain out there, but I can't really tell. Hard to see. All right, guys. This one is by um, Ellen Fannin. The Bible verse is Philippians 4:11. I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. And that was the apostle, apostle Paul speaking, the apostle to the Gentiles. And this one is called Strength through weakness. His name was Mr. Chips, but he never knew it. He was born deaf. Mr. Chips was a double blue Merrill Sheltie. They got dogs. The product of breeding two blue Merrill Shelties. The Merle coat is popular because it is beautiful and uncommon and no two dogs look alike. But breeding two murals is <sighs> but breeding two murals is discouraged because if puppies inherit a mural gene from each parent, there can be serious genetic defects such as blindness and deafness, which is probably what happened to him. Mr. Chips was a year old when I adopted him from a breeder who didn't want him. He was a gorgeous dog with thick white fur, dappled with spots of gray and brilliant blue eyes. I fell in love with him. Oh, I'm just laughing because I forgot the color of the eyes on the dogs. And they look like big white saucers now. I forgot the color of their blue eyes then. <laughs> Sorry. I fell in love with him immediately and took him home only to realize he wasn't housebroken. How does one housebreak a deaf dog? I couldn't yell no when he squatted to urinate in the house or give him effusive verbal praise when he did his business outside. Fortunately, I was finishing my freshman year of veterinary school and brought him home with me to my parents' house over the summer break. In no time, Mr. Chip's house broke himself by following my parents' dogs out to their fenced-in backyard and watching them. Seems like a pretty smart dog. That's, that's nice. A laid-back, happy fellow, nothing upset Mr. Chips. He just went with the flow, including five moves. Wow. He always settled into his new routine without a, within a day or two. I had Mr. Chips for almost 17 years. 
That's a long time for a big doll. And despite his inability to hear, he was the smartest doll I ever owned. Yeah, he sounds very smart. I suppose in this world, deafness was the norm, and it never occurred to him he had a handicap. No, because it's born that way. He didn't know no different. I was humbled by the way he overcame obstacles and yet still maintained his zest for life. Mr. Chips taught me that there is great joy in just being content in who I am and who we are. No matter the situation or the challenges we face. Contentment is an attitude that says, I will be satisfied with what God has given me. All right. And that was our animal devotion. Is it raining up there, babe? Looks like it's pouring the rain. You can't tell either? Well, that was our Bible study for today. I hope you guys have a great rest of your night. Let's bring those souls to Jesus and God willing. We'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible study. Bye, guys. God bless.